Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space and a new video. Coffee themed again, because that's just my current little obsession. <laughs> and if you missed the previous coffee themed cards that I did, one of them using the set I'm using today, I will have links to them at the end of this video in the end screen. Um, the last time I used this little stamp set, this is the little uh, Coffee Friend set that came out last year. I talked about it in the last video. And I did paper piecing. And for today's video, I did a similar sort of technique, except this time I was stamping patterns. This is the new Vintage Mosaics stamp set, which normally isn't my style. But I was looking at it and I was like, those would make really cute patterns on the cup. And then I just, you know, I started playing with it and I was like, I really like this set. <laughs> so I used that. I used a couple other new release products and I stamped with my, I wasn't going to do it, but I stamped with my coffee mug again because like, I don't know, the coffee rings add to it. Plus um, it, it fixed one of my, because I was going a little more clean and simple. And then I managed to get like a blue smear of ink and I was like, just meant to be. Let's add some coffee smears and some splatters and life is great. So, as always, keep watching and I will show you how I made the cards. This time I went with a blue color combo, which I've mentioned in recent videos. I love blue. I love all colors. You know, rainbow everything up. Love all the colors. But there's something about blue. I love blue. I love all the different shades of blue, but for whatever reason, it's not something I reach for very often. It's not a color I use very often. And yet every time I do, I'm like, ooh, I love this. So anyway, I started off with some just white cardstock and started stamping the little cup image from the Coffee Friend set and messed it up, flipped it over. Paper's got two sides. Just, yeah, just flipped it over and restamped it. So I stamped it four times because two of them I'm going to cut apart because again, I'm going to do two cards. Why not? I've got all the supplies out. So I took this one sort of border image from the vintage mosaic set and just put it on an acrylic block and I inked it up with Simon's Cadet positively saturated ink and then stamped it. And it's going to look like a hot mess right now, but just bear with me. <laughs> so I stamped it on there. And then I pulled out um, Copic markers from my stash and I will have links to the specific colors I used. I don't always post um, every single color. I usually will just keep the lid, you know, face up so you guys can see it. Coloring is subjective and 99% of the time, by the time I get around to editing, yada, yada, yada. Um, yeah, it depends on the amount of markers I use, all of the things, because doing up supply lists takes up a big chunk of time. Anyway, all that to say, I do have links to the specific colors. So I wanted to color the um, the base in blue shades just to kind of differentiate rather than like if you watch my previous video and I did the paper piecing, the whole thing was paper pieced like as is and then I added shading. This time I'm only going to um, cut that part that I stamped the pattern on and then everything it's going to get adhered on top of these ones that I'm coloring. So I colored the base with shades of blue and then the coffee with different shades of brown, of course. This could totally be a teacup, you know. I've had a few comments from people about, you know, I don't like coffee. It, it can be it can be tea. There are like specifically with this little mini set, you know, um a couple of the, like the sentiments are coffee themed, but anything can technically be, you know, repurposed into tea themed. For me, it's coffee. I love tea. I just don't drink it very often. It's for me being in Canada and, you know, tea to me is more of like a winter thing. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I don't drink it any other time, really, even though you should see my tea collection. I have a lot of tea. I, I, I do like tea, but yeah, it's a winter thing for me. Anyway, shading. This time I used Cool Grace and I just used a couple. I used C3 and C1 and just kept it simple. 
So I did all my shading on the base cups and I also added shading to the ones I stamped on. Some inks are fine with alcohol markers. The positively saturated inks for the most part are fine. I didn't like really, you know, press hard in color. I would assume I would get some sort of possible little smearing or feathering or anything like that. But I just did a light bit, light bit of coloring and it was fine. Um, I, you know, had waited. I did all the other coloring first and then did this to give, you know, the ink time to dry. And yeah, it was good to go. So once I was done my adding the shading, I trimmed out those pieces. And then I go into more depth and um, detail and all that about paper piecing and all my different little tips and tricks in the other video, which I'll have that uses the same stamp set. And that'll be linked at the end of this one if you, you know, miss that one. But I edged the cut piece with my Tombow, um, Tombow marker, my brain stopped again, my Memento Tuxedo Black, not Tombow, Memento Tuxedo Black marker. And that just covers that exposed white cardstock, makes everything look a little more seamless. And the, also my cuts don't need to be perfect because it just, it just covers everything up. Then I adhered those pieces to those cups with my craft tacky glue and then you just see it all come together and it's like oh these are really cute <laughs> so I did that and then I'm going to use more of the stamps from the vintage mosaic set and I'm going to stamp them onto some panels of white cardstock so I got them onto acrylic blocks first and I decided I just wanted to stamp like kind of a row of them and for the most part I will generally like eyeball things like back in the day I would eyeball this 100% however I am getting much older. I have been doing this for 20 years. <laughs> I am starting to age. <laughs> and I also have like astigmatism in my eyes. I've mentioned this in other videos. Like I started noticing like as I was getting older, like I've just been having a harder and harder time like lining things up. Like I used to be just, I could eyeball anything, line things up perfectly, you know, all the things. And it just doesn't work like that anymore. And it was like, oh, well, hello, I'm getting older. So I used the little tools and tricks to make things work and one of them is my t-square ruler so I used that and I drew just a very light pencil line down these panels just I didn't measure exactly where the line was I just needed a straight line to then line these stamps up the stamps are not lined up perfectly by the way I'm, I'm not worried about that in the end it's not going to matter because again perfection is overrated if you want to get really technical you could draw like a grid with the pencil lines that would work great especially if you were doing like an entire background I probably would have you know if I was gonna like fill in that entire panel I would just draw a nice light grid you know and be able to line up stamps and it would be great but for this I just needed that line just to kind of give me you know give me that little visual guide and then I stamped these with a darker shade of blue I used cadet on the cup on these panels I'm using royal which is the darkest shade of blue and oh love it love it such a rich blue so I did that and then I decided to use the same stamps on two more panels that I'm going to put on the inside of the cards so again white a2 card panels I used my little t-square ruler drew my little lines I cleaned the stamps off and these I'm stamping in the lightest shade of blue which is marine because I want to be able to um, easily write over this you know with a pen so I did the exact same thing just I start in the center and then stamp the other ones above and below and then once I got these in place like I was still kind of like mm, you know maybe I was going to keep everything kind of clean and simple but like I mentioned earlier I'm just really enjoying doing the whole little stamping with the coffee mug thing there's something about coffee rings I don't know what it is like coffee themed anything but also adding the coffee rings anyway I'll get to that in a second um by now the ink is dried Again, you just give it a few minutes to dry and it's generally good to go. And then I just used a white eraser. Again, I only did a very light line with pencil. You don't need to like make it deep and harsh. You don't want to leave like marks on your cardstock. But let the ink dry for a few minutes and then I remove the pencil lines with my eraser. And then I'm going to add my coffee rings. So this time I'm using Vintage Photo Distress Oxide Spray. Just a little bit lighter. In the other previous videos I was using Ground Espresso, which of course is much darker. So I shook it up really, really well to mix everything up in the spray. And then I just opened it up and I'm just putting this onto my glass work surface here. And then I'm just going to swirl my little coffee mug right in there and stamp it 
onto these panels. And personally, I love it. You could leave this off. If you don't like the, you know, mucky sort of look and I'm going to add some splatter and all the things, you could totally leave this off and do just, you know, just the pattern as is because it's fabulous and the colors and that's great. So stamp that and then also decided to stamp it onto the inside panels as well because... I like it. <laughs> I just like it. So, and also you can, I don't think you can see it at all in video. I did get like a random like blue smear of ink on one of the ones for the card fronts. That's also what like solidified me adding the coffee rings. Cause I was like, eh, like I always say, cover it up. Cardstock is double-sided, flip it over or add some splatter, a strategically placed, you know, bit of bling or stamped anything, you know, mistakes happen. I do it all the time, all the the time I'm clumsy I get ink you know on my fingers and don't notice and it gets you know fingerprints everywhere or I drop things and I break things the amount of tools I have broken especially because again I work in my garage you know the cement floor I have a little carpet tiles down but it's still a cement floor so I have broken so many things because I knocked them over anyway I added splatter <laughs> to these card fronts just swirled my brush in that vintage photo oxide spray that was on my desk and added a bit of splatter and then set those aside and then I pulled out the this is the new layered perky flower wafer die set in the previous video I used the I forget the name of it but oh it might actually be sitting here I, oh it is the windswept leaves I used and you know combining that with the coffee cup and I really liked that and I was like ooh, this time I'll use these little florals because these are really cute and I I don't know I just I am really enjoying just kind of not overthinking it and just mixing and matching random products, you know, the older coffee mug set with the newer patterns and then this new die set and that, you know, it's just fun. So I die cut them from white cardstock. I left them in the cardstock to do this first bit of blending and then I'm just using a couple of random post-it notes just to mask off the other blooms rather, even though I end up popping them out before I ink blend, you know, sometimes my brain is just on autopilot. So for the, the, the greenery part of the blooms, I used grays because as I was doing this, like originally it was going to be kind of just like brown, blue and white color combo. And I was like, Ooh, let's add gray, you know? So I use Simon's flannel and Earl inks for the grays and my little blending brush. And I'm not worried about the blending, you know, it does, again, it doesn't need to be perfect, but specifically with these inks, it definitely doesn't need to, need to be perfect. Let it dry it smooths out it dries back so it lightens up a little bit as it dries but it also just smooths out as it dries and I have been loving it legit like yeah yeah anyway I did the lightest blue for the base of the flowers so the marine and then with both of the little flowers there's a, a dual petal there like the v shape and then there's an individual petal so for the dual petal i used the medium blue which was cadet again and then for the individual petal i used royal so just blended that on there onto all of those pieces and then um adhering them super simple like these just i love it <laughs> i keep saying that I'm like, oh, you keep saying the same descriptions. I don't know. I, I greatly admire this die set. I, gr I, I very much enjoy <laughs> um, die sets that, you know, when you, that are very easy to assemble as well. The less thought, pro again, the less thought process. You know, I got a lot of kids. I got a lot of just random chaos in my life. And even though I do this as a job, card making is still therapy for me and I just I love the creative process okay so this too <laughs> I sat here and blended this for so long and then when I, like as I'm sitting down to edit it I'm like why did you not just pick up the ink pad and just swipe it across like why like I've sped this up it didn't take me this long it's not the end of the world but yeah I blended cappuccino ink onto some white car stock just take the ink pad man and just swipe it across <laughs> Or grab a brown piece of cardstock. Uh, again, my brain was on autopilot at this point. <laughs> so I blended very, very nicely. And it will, again, it smooths out. Like, look how it, you know, it looks a little splotchy here and there. But as it's, it just, oh, I love it. I greatly admire it. 
I, I need a thesaurus. I've act, I actually had someone. That's why I'm making these sarcastic little jokes. I've had people in the past. Like I remember there was a comment. That was a while ago. I forget when it was a while ago, but it stuck with me about like, you need a thesaurus. <laughs> like you keep saying everything is cute. And then I started saying, I love everything. And it's like, is there anything you don't love? I'm like, well, I, I don't have a thesaurus on hand. Anyway, anyway, I'm in a mood, you guys. It's been a long day. So I let the panel dry. And then I used my anti-static powder tool on it and I dumped the embossing powder on it to make sure that the ink was dry and it was. And then I stamped a sentiment. This is from the, I got to pull this out. It's in my little pile here. Um, this is from the etched greeting set. This was in the June, the May or the June, a recent card kit anyway. And then Simon just released the, the coordinating wafer dies. So I stamped the sentiment with VersaFine Clair Nocturne ink. You don't need to heat emboss the sentiment. I just did it because one, it adds a little extra element because it gives it that shine. And two, because VersaFine Clair Nocturne takes longer to dry and I am clumsy, I it's guaranteed I'm going to smear it. So if I heat emboss it, it just saves me having to redo everything. So I heat embossed it and then I die cut it with the coordinating wafer die. And then I also used some Baker's Twine because I've just been really enjoying adding that to my cards again lately. So I wrap that around the card fronts and I always use my little reverse tweezers. These are a must have tool in the craft room. And generally I highly recommend having more than one pair because these just like so many other things like to grow legs and just disappear. I have multiple pairs from multiple different brands. So then I have multiple colors of them because that's part of it too. <laughs> It makes it a little easier because I can in general at least find one pair. So I use my reverse tweezers to hold the the Baker's twine in place so I can tie my little bow and then, you know, fiddle around with it till I get it the way I want it and then tighten it, trim off the ends. We're good to go. So I've got my Baker's twine on my backgrounds. The florals, I'm just going to adhere with craft tacky glue. I'm just going to kind of tuck those into place underneath the Baker's twine. So get those adhered onto both of these card fronts and then the little coffee mugs I'm going to pop up with a little bit of foam adhesive just to one give it a little bit of dimension but also this just adheres it nicely over because I've got you know a bunch of texture going on with the um, elements of the die cut and the baker's twine so put the foam tape on the back of there and then same thing with that little uh, thinking of you sentiment. I'm going to pop foam tape onto that as well and pop that onto the card front. And then I'll repeat the process on the second card. I'm not going to include that in the footage because it's redundant. It's the exact same thing. So put foam tape on the back of this as well. Got that into place. I decided not to add any other sentiments like to the inside of the card. Um... It just keeps this one open-ended like it's just thinking of you so it just applies to practically anything you know so pop that into place and then my card bases are simon says stamps fog gray cardstock one of my favorites it's just mm, chef's kiss like such just a, such a nice light gray so that was my card bases and these are top folding a2 um, no cards, so four and a quarter by five and a half. And I trimmed down all of these cardstock panels that I stamped and added the like coffee rings to. I trimmed them all down to three and three quarters by five inches, I think. Just, you know, so it's nicely framed by the card base. And then I adhered everything down with just craft tacky glue. Once those are adhered into place, um, I'm going to add my little Trinity Stamps coffee bean uh, heart sprinkles which generally when I do coffee bean cards, this, that's like the first thing I reach for is these little, these little heart sprinkles. They're just perfect. I've had these for years. Um, I'm going to put these into place, just a few, you know, and they go nicely with the sentiment and whatnot. So I'm going to adhere those into place with little dabs of craft tacky glue. And then my final little bit of embellishment with these is my white gel pen. And I've talked about this before and... I always get questions about this with gel pens. My biggest um, advice when it comes to a white gel pen, you need to use it consistently. I've said this before and I'll keep saying it. Honestly, you just, if, you, if it sits for months on end 
the the ink inside the gel pen dries out in the tip you can sometimes rework it sometimes like roll it on your fingers because the heat from your hand sometimes helps to get it going scribbling on scrap paper also helps but sometimes it's just it's done for so the biggest tip is just to use it consistently so instead of having like 20 white gel pens only have a couple and use them consistently trust me I know this because I have 20 white gel pens and the one I use consistently is the one that works. <laughs> so like I always say, do as I say, not as I do. So anywho, those are the cards. I hope you guys enjoyed my very random, very random mood, kind of overtired, real, honestly, honestly, overtired voiceover. And as always, um, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. There will be pictures and picture links to all the supplies I used in the blog post. That will be in the description box below. I will also have the supply list linked in the description box below. So you can check that out if you are interested. And then I'll link the other couple of videos at the end screen here. So you just watch to the end and those will pop up as well. Thank you all so very much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping and commenting and subscribe if you haven't. I'd love to have you. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.